by request. Twice a day, you hit the best you can get. Yeah, me and little kitty ain't got more yet. 
When I was younger, I had a linoleum knife or a buck. It was a buck um, craftsman combo. I got it at Sears, and it was a, a hawkbill, a hawkbill knife. Um, anyways, it was a folding knife. I used a couple of carbon steel hawkbill knives, but they didn't last very long. But that was just a, a good field knife for me um, at that time. I was going through a lot of different different. Uh, blades and stuff at that time but that was one and that was the first time I think that I did draw curls long story short the buck craftsman combo broke so I had the blade um, and then with that blade as you can imagine this being being the hawkbill I would hold it almost more like a flint tool and I would use it for, for things like that And it was good for for arrows um, you could also do it like this but for some reason I actually had more control doing the draw cut now flint tools were used like that you can almost pull this exact the exact curl off with a flint flake so um, anyways that's a little history on at least the origins of how I kind of started doing them. I'm not saying I'm the first but just saying that's how I kind of came about it. 
when these beasts came along, the WSKs, this is a back, more on this later, but when the wilderness survival type knives came along, that hit me that this would be perfect. And as far as I know, it's not in the Topps manual or any of the other manuals um, on doing, doing draw cuts like that. Most, most of the early, I'll, I'll say early videos of draw cuts were done traditional draw knife style. All right, so this has got a really beefy, beefy saw. But to me, there's no need. See, that's that's biting into my hand, which is fine. But um, even with the tops tracker, I just eliminated the need to to do this, even on a flat surface. There's no need to even get my hand in here. I'm holding it basically three, four fingers, two fingers. It's a one pound blade, so um, light. Now, if that's, if that's not of use, I don't know what is, but anyways, this is just palm. It's soft wood. Um, I'm not testing the edge of this. I've been testing it for I guess close to three weeks and I've cut about six dumpsters worth of brush um, limbing, limbing the, the larger hackberry trees that I cut exclusively with this unless they were up to coke can size and I'd use a chainsaw because I am at work and I need to keep my job so I can't just play with this beautiful knife all day long but um, I'd say six dumpsters of cutting some pretty damn hard green wood is a good test of the chopping so I'm I'm convinced I'm gonna shred this up I don't want to get all sham wow with this but hit a little spot there it's not, not too flat all right I'm gonna stop what happened I dug in too deep when you dig in too deep, it's going to catch. If you catch and you're pulling too hard, that's when the problem's going to start. So to prevent that, just for my own safety, and hopefully this spreads, but the key is not to break the wrist. If you break the wrist, one, it could fly out of your hand if you're pulling and you get that slingshot. Two, um, it's just a lot easier on your your uh, your skeleton doing it this way. One thing I try to keep is less than an, well, a, a, more than a knife's distance away from my carcass. All right. So what I'm going to do just to you know, this is just demos, and it's just something I've been wanting to do for a long time, but. These draw cuts are very useful, and they can be done safe. Um, it's all up to you, but these are some tips that might save you some grief and stitches, or worse. So, this is just soft palm because it's really impressive. demo stick. Uh, here's a palm frond brush.
Okay, all those are made with this. Been goofing around just pulling curls and getting some tender, little little uh, tender supply up for the backyard. And just having a ball. Here's my bench made middle mat striker. smells like paint. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. There's some green stuff in here too, so that might be it. Anyways, Uh, there's a lot of people that, that still cringe when they see this technique, but um, it is it is a useful technique, and it can be done safe. Um, knock on wood, I have not gutted myself with um, with um, a knife using this draw cut. You know, blood blood circle, whatever, and that would that would scare the hell out of me if someone started yelling blood circle as I'm sitting trying to whittle a spoon or something. But that became the norm. Um, also screaming, where's that knife going to go if it slips? Stuff like that. I don't know. Hey, be careful with that knife, stupid. Well, I'm no fool, no serene. I'm going to live to be 103. I play safe for you and me, because I'm no fool. Any fool can get a knife and run out to the woods. But if you slip and cut your jugular, you'll do nobody good. Well, I'm no fool, no siree. I'm going to live to be 103. I play safe for you and me, because I'm no fool. Scooby-dop, 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 scooby-d